Chat of the Wild is a part of the Greenlit Podcast Network. To find out more information, as well as other great shows, go to greenlitpodcast.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chat of the Wild. Gaiden. In this season, we are playing Oceanhorn, Monster of Uncharted Seas. Ooh. In the last episode, we collected a gold shape. No, not that one. But in this episode, we're going to go <laughs> meet some fish people, and they might be frozen. No, not that one. Uh, <laughs> they have they have a thing with three triangles on it. No, not that one. No, not that one. Um <laughs> Yeah, in our in our last episode, we got bombs and arrows. No, not those. And uh, when we got done with the boss, uh, we do go back to our our ship, and then we do get to see the the conch that we have talks to us, and it does some ASMR stuff. I was say, buddy, I got a thing. <laughs> I got a thing back home. It's it's like he's got the it's the hermit. And it's like Tetra's charm, the the pirate's charm that ta- like, mm-hmm. hey, when she talks mm-hmm. to you and stuff. Except he's like, I got a thing back at home. You got come see us. Come come back to your tent and see it. It'll be good. Except it's not actually saying anything. It's, yeah, it's right. Just... <laughs> so yeah, the hermit says, "Come back to my island. Uh, yeah. I've got something that I need you to do." So we get there. <laughs> And he's just like, hey, kid, go jump down this well. Don't ask questions. <laughs> he's like, there are things down there that make, like, nightmares down there that keep me up at night. But, uh, yeah. But you should just go. Yeah. Just go down the well. And then you're like, are you going to give me, like, a, a foot to, like, get up there? No. Figure it out. Go cli- Go run around the island so that you can fall into the well. Like, I kept pushing up against the well. I was mm-hmm. like... Am I just going to jump into it? Is it just going to like transition over there? No. No, because this game, we don't have a jump. Although we do technically get like a quote unquote jump in this. We it's not a vertical jump. We get yeah. the courage to jump sometimes in this in this section. Yeah, it's it's an x-axis jump. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a leap, I guess you could say, right? Yeah. Um so we circle around, drop into the well. And this is on a, it's like a mini dungeon. We've got some people to fight. Uh, a mini dungeon would have something good at the end. It has something story related. Sure. I guess maybe. I mean, yeah, I still don't, don't know, know what story related, but <laughs> yeah, we don't know yet, but, um, it certainly doesn't do anything for us now. No. Uh, so we go down there and, uh, there, there's monsters to fight. There's things to push. I believe there's some stuff to bomb. And that's that we have Ocean to, like, Horn. Blow up some walls. <laughs> that is Ocean Horn in a <laughs> nutshell. Um, but when when we get down there, they start talking about uh, what was the name of it? The um, there there's a character that they the I just had the notes on here. The cro- yeah, it, it's such a weird thing to say. The chronicler is something they talk about, and this is apparently their grave. This is where they are buried, um, and they were like one of the founders, and the, they they created a lot of like the technology, and like they, they were like a big deal. And this is the first we're he- hearing of them. You think you'd think that they would have chronicled the building of this technology, but no, you would think. they built it. I guess because I mean it would make sense for the what, what's the other guy the. Uh, um, the, there's another gravestone up top for a different sounding named person, like the the topographer or the uh, the ar- archie, ar- the archaeologist or something like that. I yeah, so remember. yeah, it would make it would make sense for an archaeologist, like a, a world famous archaeologist and a world famous chronicler, to like be buried around. Like, hey, we we wrote down a lot of the crap that happened in this world. Well, no, that's where he mm-hmm. died. Like the whole yeah. point is that this is where the hermit's friend who was who found the chronicler's grave died. So he went oh. down into the well and was researching the chronicler and got killed by something, which I thought it was super ridiculous because the hermit makes it sound like there's some unspeakable terror down there and something killed his friend. Uh, Cause you can yeah, find I'm... his friend's grave, but the only thing down there is the same enemies that are yeah. on top of the Island. So it's like he could have gotten killed anywhere. 
Like, he got, it, it's not there anymore. He got killed by a centipede. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do find it. At some point, we find an empty chest. And then that is like, there's a note near it that the Chronicler is like, I found it. It's the most amazing item ever. It's so cool. It's like that South Park episode in heaven where they're just like, oh, man, I wish you could see it. This thing's so amazing. <laughs> and then we just go on and we find a, I don't know, some kind of their version of a PDA. Like, apparently it's a journal, but it looks like a some kind of device. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's Teppo's journal. And yeah. we when we get that, we just teleport back up. And the hermit is just like, Give me that. oh, thanks for doing that. Uh, I'm going to go and figure this out. You go and find the whatever thing. Yeah, beat the next dungeon and come back here. By Where is it? Don't ask me. I'm busy. Beat, <laughs> by the time you're ready for the next story beat, I should have this pretty much uh, sussed out. Yeah, so we can uh, we can go around and I don't remember if if something guides us to that, but I did go back to Tickerel automatically just because I was like, I got new items. Yeah. I didn't I do the go hermit hit stuff all the until, uh, much later in this section. Cause I was just like, I'll get to you later. I'll get to you. Okay. See, I wasn't sure. Yeah. I didn't, wasn't sure if there was anything that like locked you out of it. If no, was, like, <laughs> yeah. Like you there's had almost to no order. reason to go there. Okay. Yeah. I turned on my game and it, the hermit was talking to me and said, come visit me. Yeah, and I so went the, the opposite direction when someone's like, come and see you. Gotta come over and see me. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm going to go back and... I heard there were fireworks. I want to see the fireworks. So I'm going to go there. Right. So we get back to Tickerel, and then we are, are stopped by... Uh, was it Niti? I think is her name. Yeah. Um, Nettie. And N- Nettie. An old Nettie Pot. It- and she is the daughter of the fireworks man, the f- fireworksman. Um, and she says, my dad wanted to go to, what is it, Hummingbird Peak? Hill. Or is that what they called it? Hummingbird yeah. Hill. Yeah. Uh, and that is where they set it off. But there's monsters in the way and there's things stopping it. But it, it must be done. No, Tradition he, he, must be upheld. He hurt his back. <laughs> That's what happened to her dad. She's like, dad injured himself. It's really bad. Yeah. And I was okay. like, all right, that's that is to that's tough, but someone has this is a noble cause, fireworks, and I will I will rise to the challenge. And then I ran past her house and her dad was just standing there and I was like, Hold up. I thought you were injured beyond repair. And he's like, Oh man, I'm old and my back hurts. It's like all right. He's like he can't sit down. That's the problem. He Fair. can't step. He's stuck there. He's stuck hey, in that one position. Back problems are no joke. So I'm no. just glad I thought he was like gonna die and really he's not he's over just there like, doing backflips or yeah. anything <laughs> he's also like the the like the guy who worships the like he's the fireworksman but he's also our resident sun worshiper right he, sure he won't just i i i think he does more than just set up fireworks one day out of the out of the year yeah so yeah again this is ocean horn we go through some caves, we fight some monsters, we pick up some bombs, we blow some things up. Uh, that is the, we have to take this path in the cave. I think we have to go out at one point and then come back in. I don't remember. You do that too in Ocean Horn a lot. I, I tried to drag her to my secret uh, swimming spot that I talked about. This, this is how you get up there is that place where I sequence broke it. Mm. and swam around and was like, come on, I know a better way. Because she gave, she gives you the key. Like, let's go on up there and set the fireworks mm-hmm. off. And I was like, I got a better way. And then she stood on the beach, and I was like, all right, fine. I'll, I'll do the normal way. Ugh. Jeremy, but- thank you for telling uh, us all that bombs pretty much <laughs> kill everything because I made this section so much easier. It, the rest of the game is going to be, is just is, it's cake when you use bombs. Five. Five bombs on this guy. <laughs> well, what, hang on. So, yeah. yeah, when we, especially, like, when we get to the top of here, we're interrupted by this dark, like, he's, like, three times bigger than us. And it's, like, there is this this shadowy figure in this cloak with, like, a skull mask on. Is this the guy from the boat? Yes. That we saw on the first island? And that overnight. Maybe. 
thing where like when we when all the we woke up the next morning and the hermit was being attacked by the the battle droids from the little spinny ones from episode mm-hmm. one basically mm-hmm. yeah that that, they, that this is this guy they do look like the battle droids they're droidicas yeah we do run into those creatures in this cave as yeah. we're making our way up there so that right. makes sense um yeah, I guess if you're really like thinking about it, it'd be like, oh, that's why they're back again, because this guy is back. And we've been uh, hearing about him for a while, too. People, everyone will be like, there was a boat, a dark boat on the back corner of the island last night. So, I mean, Brian, what was your strategy for bombs. fighting this guy? I PC, threw, what about you? I, th- <laughs> I, I, I threw bombs until I ran out, and then I just like, um, I just hated it. This is another example of what I said before, where it feels like the boss is. This one was better, but it just feels like the boss is kind of there doing stuff, and you have to, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like, make it work. Yeah, I, I I threw four bombs at him, took a step back, and went, "You you got anything? Like, like what? If you've got an insta kill attack, I would go ahead and use it because I'm about to throw the last bomb." And that mm-hmm. was, yeah, that was the story of him. And then he was like, oh, you are such a brave and tough warrior. This isn't over or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I just threw half of my bomb bag at you and you were <laughs> but dead. But then he explodes. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was expecting <laughs> that. I was expecting him to, to poof away. Um, I just I just think if you bomb him enough, he just explodes. Yeah, yeah. true. And then he threatens the whole island. And he's like, I sent a message. And you'll know what that message is yeah. when the time comes. Is is the message you exploding? Is that you, you dying? Like, that's the message? I thought he said lighting the torch was the message. Yeah, right. I think the but torch But he doesn't tell light... us why that's a message. Like, the, the message is still in the post. It hasn't gotten there yet. It's like, don't worry. When it's, it's three days for shipping, uh, when it gets there, you'll know. It's like that old, you know, in like in like fantasy movies where you have all these towns where they light the the torch, and then you can see in the hill mm-hmm. along the way where someone else lights the torch. It has to go through forty of those before it finally makes it to, to the, the evil one. Yeah, it's got to ping every single one before the message gets there. So yeah, we beat him. He blows up, and then we get a firework festival, and then we get a weird scene with uh, Needy Nettie, where she just basically. Talks about how I, I took it as her being like, I love you. <laughs> and I'm like, huh? Like, yeah, it's like, here's a leave. romance scene with no character development behind it. Right. This is um, where we do. This is where I said before where I was like, I do like the art style of this. I think it holds up well. But then in this scene where we see the mouths move, the, the and really close up. up on the faces. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, oh, okay. Yeah, that coverage shot. Yeah, this shot. is a seven-year-old game. Yeah, that coverage shot did not help. Yeah. Although this game um, does have less uh, like pixel tearing than uh, uh, Mario Golf Super Rush, so there's that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we do all that, and then you know, Needy it meets us down at our boat again, and is just like, "Oh, I wish I us. could go with you." She follows um, us everywhere we go. Well, yes. yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah. Now that when I think anytime she, we go back into town, she's there with us now. She so yeah. so th- there was not so to what BC was saying that like this is a, a a romance scene with no character development. There was plot development though because she says the name of two islands we've yet to hear of. So the game was like, why don't you go on a date and we'll open up two new areas during that date. This will be the perfect time for that. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. She because she says like, hey, I wish I could go sailing around. Like you do, but I have I've got priorities at home. But make sure you come knock on my door every time you come to town. Mm-hmm. I do sleep next to my dad's bed, but that's beside the point. <laughs> we sleep in a boat. We we can't talk. I mean, I threw my I, when we went home to see the hermit. I went back up to my tent to see things, and I just picked up my sleeping bag and threw it in the water and was like, "I have a boat to sleep in now. I don't need you anymore." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. We we have two more islands that we can go check out now. Uh Gilfolk's Drop and Southwind Isle. And I don't know if you have to go to one first or if you can BC, what do you got? I, oh you you have to go 
to the Southwind Island because there's no point in going to Gilfolk's Drop. Well, see, that's yeah. what I was going to ask. I was going to ask if you go there and then they say, we, we talk to the fish people. No, 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 not those. But they say, we need some honey. Mm. That's it. And then you're like, it's not even like you, it says like, new quest, find honey. It's just, they're just like, oh, you, you can't come in here. You don't have any honey. And it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you'll go. And I, I think even before you we do Gill Folks Drop, there's another island that opens up that's just like some reef island. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you're like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I would expect to be able to do something on this reef island because we're going that's after if the you water find whatever. one of the bottles if you find a bottle there's a guy that says i'm at this reef and then it says you unlocked reef but there's nothing for mm-hmm. you to do at, at the yeah, reef. yeah right you need yeah. uh i stood there and was like i need to jump on this i because they hadn't said yet if we were going to be able to jump but like the signs are everywhere that we will eventually gain the courage to jump so i just figured mm-hmm. i looked took one look at that island and was like i'll come back another day and the same yeah. thing with with Gilfolk. Like as soon as we pull up, Dad's book starts talking, and he's just. I'm like, oh, this is clearly Story Island. I probably should go to the other island first. Uh, I also didn't see the target that opens the gate, so I it's couldn't do anything here. here. Yeah, I couldn't do anything here. But yeah, basically based on Dad's dialogue, I was like, this is the this is the Story Island. So I'll go somewhere else. Mm. Yeah, you can go through Gil Folk's drop, but then, like Jeremy said, they just tell you that you need the honey, mm-hmm. so you got to leave. And then they make a really offensive joke about all humans looking alike. Um. <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, so they say no humans are allowed in here except for the guy that delivers our honey. And it's like, okay. Um, we know what like, he well, looks you don't... like. Yeah, they were like, but obviously you're not him because you don't have honey. We can't tell any other like feature whatsoever. Really? <laughs> I miss that cuz I didn't I didn't go talk to them before. I got to the guy with the honey down on this this other island and was just like, "Really? That's what you want you want me to carry this item all the way back out of this island, sail to sail to the Gill people island." And carry this all the way to someone, presumably. Okay. Okay, game. That's why okay. I I think it was easier for me to go all the way there, unlock all the stuff beforehand, then go back, because we have to go to the, the South Wind Isle. It's another cave. We go through there. There's some windmills that, for at first, I kept trying to use my spell to loosen them up, because mm-hmm. they were like, you, you see a sign where it was just like, sometimes windmills get a lot of dust on them, and they clog them up. And that's all it says. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll chuck a thing at it. No, you got to hit it with your sword. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's how you loosen up the dust on the windmill. There's a Don Quixote joke in here somewhere, and I'm <laughs> too lazy to find it. But it's there. <laughs> well, it's like if Don Quixote uh, tried to kill this one windmill for about 10 minutes because it, it made it look like the door was going to open. And then he gave up. And turned around, and then the real windmill was behind him all along, and he went, mm, son of a... All right, fine. You got me, game. Because that's what I did. I, so I was the- like, w- maybe there's something to this windmill. And by the time I finally gave up and decided to explore further, the other one's right there. Like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Cool, mm-hmm. that one opens it then. Good. Good. So the theme of this cave is pushing blocks to make bridges. That's the we have to do this a few times. Okay, bridges. There was okay. That was a different word. Okay, I was like, <laughs> that's the theme of this game. But yeah, uh, but yeah, pushing blocks is the theme of this game, basically. Yeah, um, we go through this whole cave, and then at the end of it, the honeyman is waiting there, and we see him, and he's just like, "Oh, thanks for saving me. I fell down here forever ago. Here's." Take my giant honey that's as big as you. Um, and then, like Brian said, we then have to carry that all the way back. And I don't think you can break it, right? I don't know. I, don't, I didn't try. I don't know. But, I think if you, th- I wonder if you throw it, you can break it. They make a statement about, hey, if you lose the honey, then you can go buy more, which made me think you could. And it was a while before I figured out you could drop it. So, uh, yeah. You can, I yeah, was I able to put, put it down. Yeah, you can put it down and then kill something and then keep going. But 
I did find a shop afterwards that was selling honey, and then I was thinking, like, what else am I going to need this for? Like, I don't remember a lot of honey-based missions in this. It's it's there just for this mission. Yeah, so it's you easier to throw money away. Yeah, it's easier to put it in the shop than it is to maybe code a new one onto that guy. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, we go and take the honey back to the Gilman, and they will open it up, open the gate for us, and then they basically tell us, like, okay, this is why BC kept saying, like, okay, we're in a world of oceans. Why is one of the biomes ocean pe- like fish people like <laughs> water and everything and it's because these fish people the the uh the gill folk are not allowed to go into the ocean because of ocean horn because there's a creature out there that it, it is just filled with evil creatures now and they're forbidden on going out there now so they are they are stuck in these caves and that is the reason why like and this is the water area for them. Their caves do lead down to their like ancient society or whatever, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. but we're not allowed to see that. I will say I do love the song that plays in this, like the the cave song that they have for them. I think it's really nice. Uh, just I want to throw out some positives here. The thing is, mm. like I I'm I'm enjoying my time with this game. I don't think this game is like superb or anything mm. like that. I think it's doing what it wanted to do and I think it's fine. And the thing is, I'm a sucker for these types of games. So, I'm just enjoying playing a Zelda like basically. You know, it's it's whenever the the games I don't like are the ones that are like, you know, oh, it's a Zelda like, but they screwed up all of this stuff. This one is like, yeah, they are doing a Zelda. And that's but that's all they're doing is uh-huh. a Zelda. Yeah, I I think the whole idea of the gill folk, like, I'm just imagining if in another game you had a, you know, flying race, but they all have to live in this cave because there's some dragon that just, destro- like, rules yeah. the skies now. I think that idea is cool. Um, I just hate that, like, we get in there and we've already jumped around and done a bunch of stuff to get to the gill folk, and now it's like, are you ready to jump around some more? Are you ready to go to random places and do random things? I hope you are. Are you ready to then leave and go to another place and get another thing? Yeah. Yeah, so we get into there and they're basically just like, sure, you could look around. Uh, Actually, there is a guy that says like, I'm going to tell you a story now. This is your own fault for <laughs> coming up to me. You shouldn't have talked to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I mean, he basically just explains all that stuff, right? Like, there's monsters out there. This is the reason we're here. Part yeah. of it is they talk about, like, where their old king died and it cursed their their ancient uh, civilization or whatever you want to call it. And they're, they're... Um, well, like, the king died. So the king died due to... A, in, due to like a curse or something. And then during the king's funeral, someone gave a cursed gift to the princess, Mm -hmm. which was the devil curse that froze everyone in the castle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and how long ago was this? Was this a thousand years? Yeah. Okay. So, so these, we, we run into people who, who have been frozen for a long time in this, in this section. It also sounds like they live for a a really long time because like one of them says like I was only like a few hundred years old like a like a child when this happened yeah. or something like, like that. Like I was getting confused in the section because they they weren't being very clear whether they were talking about people who who lived a thousand years ago or people who were like saying, "Oh, this just happened not too long ago because I am this old or whatever." And so like I was like, wait, I thought this happened a long time ago. Are you telling me this just happened? And and I was getting very confused by these things. But, yeah. Right. But we have some ice that's blocking our way. So in order, to do, in order to deal with that, we do have to find a fire spell. But in order to get... Well, so here's the thing. I know... Did you guys get the ice spell? Yes. Yeah, because I thought, I thought I had to. I didn't. It made it harder. Um, but, like, I can go back and get it now if I want. 
I think but the only thing that makes that it harder can... is the the fire breathing enemy. Yes, yeah. and that's he is it. Incredibly annoying. Um, but he, it's almost like like a uh, a Mister X in Resident Evil Two kind of yeah. thing, where I'm in that dungeon, and because uh, we can find a bottle that you can go to the old fortress, uh, and if you go through all of this, it's just another mini dungeon. You do this, you do your ocean horn things, uh, and then you will find an ice spell. That lets you freeze things mm-hmm. or put out fire, basically. This is a um, this would have been a good game to play after Crystallis. There's a lot of you you did the thing. Now here's three or four new areas for you to run around over and over and over again until you find each thing and unlock each thing and get each thing and then it that furthers the progression of each thing until you finally get to the the next dungeon point. And then you're going to do it all over again. Right. I I think my thing with this is, like, we have to go through Gilfolk Island so many times. So the the fire spell is at least in the Gilfolk's, like, temple. Mm -hmm. But there's not, like, a fast Mm -hmm. travel or, like, shortcut to and from. So every time we, like, we go out and we come back, we have to go through that Gilfolk area. And there's just this super terrible raining like fog texture thing going on um and like when i got to the fire dungeon and there i found the note that said hey there's this item in the old fortress that can make everything easier i was like do i really need this or (laughs) like is it necessary (laughs) or is it something that just makes the dungeon easier but i didn't want to go through the entire dungeon and then have someone tell me Oh hey, you didn't have the peanut butter, so uh, you're gonna have to go back through <laughs> the walk back through the fire dungeon. You gotta uh, find, find Peter Butterman. Who brings us peanut butter. Uh. Yeah, and especially because after, because uh, I it took me a while to find the fire dungeon, and I got in there and it was like you don't have the thing, you need the thing, and I was like, okay, cool. Uh, and after that, I couldn't find the fire section again. Because I'd only made it there once. I forgot exactly how I had gotten there. And it took me forever to find my boat. And so I got lost on the way back, too. And so ne- then I had... It took me like an hour to once I got the, the ice spell to actually figure out where the hell is the fire dungeon on Gilfolk Island. And it, you have to like do some swimming and stuff to get to it. I forgot all about it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't say specifically how I was able to get around it. Because, um, yeah, I don't think... There isn't anything that like blocks you no. in terms of moving around, but no, you just do that... have yeah. this this uh you know flying creature with this stone mask on that shoots fire at you. And uh I just got I'll I'll say it now because it applies to everything. Stuff that shoots fire in this game shoots fire for way too long. Mm-hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There are statues that do it that you are just standing there. Unless it's for what meant feels to help like an you. Eternity. <sighs> Unless it's a thing that can help you, in which case it is not on for long enough. No. Uh, and yeah, just wanted to throw that out there. It's annoying. But I was able to skip doing the ice spell and all of that. Uh, ran through all of this. Uh, it was, it was honestly, it made it a little bit more enjoyable because mm-hmm. I would suddenly see a line of fire jetting out of the corner and I was like, Oh crap, I got to get out of this room as soon mm-hmm. as possible <laughs> and just ran through there. Um, I, I was unintentionally like speeding through this game. I'm not trying to be in a hurry. Like I do want to explore and I want to get as much as I can, but I find myself, uh, I think it's just because the puzzles are a little too easy. Like, you walk into a room, and I see the puzzles, and I'm like, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do here. Yeah. And so I walk in, push it, push the thing where I need to push it. Uh, there's even, there's one where we come across a statue where there's a sign next to it that says, don't lean on the statue. Yeah. I was like, really? Really, it's game? Like, That's so you what... just have to push the statue. Okay. I don't know. Let's take a break, though. When we get back, we'll talk about more of Ocean Horn. In this quarter, on the Greenlit Podcast Network, Chris Sims and Matt Wilson. And in this quarter, VHS oddities, confusing animation, and modern not-so-classics. Plus snacks, movie fighters. We watch movies and beat them up. (laughs) And we're back, folks, with another episode of Nasty Labs. Nasty Labs. It's a show hosted by me, Kinsey Burke. 
and my dumbass friend Mark. Nasty lips. This twice monthly show about game development, Japan life, being nice to people, and hey, maybe a few other things. Nasty, Nasty Labs, Labs is a product of Chuhai Labs Brand Incorporated and now available for three easy payments of four twenty sixty nine, only on the Greenlit Podcast Network. So we have our spells. We go back to Gilfolk. We can destroy the ice. I was disappointed that, that when I use my fire spell, I don't see any fire. The ice just explodes. It starts to shake. Yeah. Uh, which was, uh, they could do fire. We've seen fire. I don't know why I don't see fire here. Saw a lot of fire in that fire area. <laughs> One thing I want to say before we t- like get into the actual ice palace is the fire spell takes up like half mm-hmm. of your mm-hmm. MP bar mm-hmm. and you have to use it a lot. And so sometimes the game is like really good about, hey, every single jar in this room is going to give you magic, Mm -hmm. but sometimes it's not. And sometimes it only gives you magic in certain rooms where it's like, okay, I need hearts now. And they're like, I gave you magic. And I was like, yeah, two magic fills me up. And they're like, but you need more magic, right? If I had a health healing spell, maybe, maybe I would. Yeah. Uh, It's, it is inconsistent. Like we can, so if you go to the one guy at Tickerel that sells stuff, you can buy a revive thing. You can also buy you can buy something that will revive you. You can buy an item that you can use manually to get your hearts back, and then you can buy ones that will manually give you more bombs and arrows. Like I believe that's how it works. Is that it is like a when you buy arrows off him, you're not buying arrows, right? Did you, either of you do this? You're buying. Right, like so a f- when you buy when you I bought the bomb one, and I I'm pretty sure. It, when your bombs hit zero, it just replenishes. Oh, okay, okay. Which is okay. That's I'm. I'd be fine with that. Uh, yeah, um, it was fine. I just kept dying. Sure. <laughs> uh, so we go into here and um, we get into the ice dungeon. You make your way around, all that stuff. Uh, we go through the swamps, yada yada yada. Uh, we get into there, and there's a guy just like frozen. That you can use your fire spell to get him back. And he... Does he give you a key, I believe? Or does he just let you buy stuff? I can't remember if he gives you a key or not. He does let you buy stuff, though. Yeah, he opens a shop. And I was like, why do you have a shop down here? That's dumb. And then after I died, I was like, thanks for having a shop down here. (laughs) Can I buy stuff (laughs) off of you? Can I get things? Which was a pain. was super painful because... Money is tough to come by in this game. So I was like, wow, I'm just spending everything I have now. Hey, you know what? I, I'm i okay with how hard it is to get money in here because after we played enough Zelda games where we're just like, we have too much money. It screws up the economy. It doesn't mm-hmm. make it fun where I'm always just like, yes, more coins, please. Yeah, I need more okay. coins. Uh, it's, you know, it, it it is, this is not a challenging game. But that is a challenging aspect. Has anyone bought the the five hundred coin thing that he has? The broken whatever it is. Uh, that is a device that will help you find the uh, the crystals. Yeah, if you oh, have, okay. if you're near a blood shard, it basically it tells you how many are on the island that you're on, and then it'll give you like if you're close to one, it'll say in range. Okay. Um, the only problem is like it just says in range, so sometimes they're in range, but you can't like get to them. Right. So, yeah, you have to go through a different entrance or something like that to get to to them. Sometimes it's like the Korok um, mask. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're in the ice temple, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I actually found that there was. I thought there were some more notable notable setups in here, where you had like uh, there was that spike maze. That you had to walk along the walls, which I actually I liked. I That's thought it was a little challenging. Oh, like really? Because I hated game. that. <laughs> was it? Yeah, it's a Mario Party Four mini game. <laughs> Did you fall off, PC? No. So at first, I didn't realize you had to walk along the walls, and I just oh. walked along the floor. And fun fact, it's real hard not to like get hit by those spikes. Yeah, they don't make. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, they don't want. They want you to not fall down there, and they want to punish you for doing so. But they also want to make it where you're not going to immediately die if you fall. Right. Like, 
but I was fortunate that I went through the maze and didn't fall at once on it. So like I went down and saw them from a distance and was like, okay, I'll go and get these treasure chests and then I'll go through what they want me to do. And then I'm just like, Oh, it was just the treasure chests. That's all that was there for was you don't actually have to go through Mm -hmm. the area with the spikes. Yeah. That's just I, sort of your punishment. If I'm just glad there weren't like a uh, keys, bunch of bat, a bunch of bats flying around to mess with mm-hmm. us in in mm-hmm. the spiked room. Kind of like in uh, the city in the sky, there was that one segment where it's like yeah. I'm on this tiny little ledge, and anytime I swing my sword, I'm gonna fall off that ledge. So another room has this puzzle where you have to push a button it lowers the water and then before the water comes back up you have to push a block over to a switch yeah. which i liked i thought that was i thought that was kind of clever that i didn't solid. think it was like really hard but it was like cool it's different i haven't seen it that that's not a zelda thing necessarily yeah uh you know there's there's variations of like weighing things down in water and all that but not in the same way uh we do when we get into there, we do have an option to go either left or right because we do get a key. I think there, I think there is something that you do, and it makes a treasure chest fall from the ceiling. Uh, you get a key, and you can go left or right. One of the yeah, rooms like you that. have to collect we had choice. That was yeah. nice. I actually uh, thought of you, Brian. Yeah, when I was like, do I go left or right? I was like, oh hell yeah! Would you? Where'd you go? Uh, I went left, which was a mistake. <laughs> I went right. I just looked some up. of us did it differently. What? <laughs> yeah, I went left as well. Uh, we we will circle back around anyway because we do have to eventually go through all of that. Uh, there is, if you go right, there is an area that it does have a bigger play, a bigger room where you have to find three different keys to unlock three levels of mm-hmm. locks to get through there. That's uh, a uh, is is that a link to the past or not a link? Uh, is that a uh... Link's Awakening, or is that an Oracle game where you've got like, I believe it's four, Oracle, four locks in a row, or something like that? Actually, no, that's been in both. Because I know, yeah, in Link's Awakening, I want to say it's in either. I think it might actually be in the first dungeon. Uh, yeah, I was thinking they second that. or something, but yeah, um, yeah. But, so I was like, oh hey, there's that, there's that thing. That's a that's a Zelda thing right there. So the item that we get in here are. Special boots. No, not those. Uh, these are the trencher boots. The entire episode, I was like, these boots are just around the corner, man. <laughs> just around the river bend, dude. They're going to be here. Oh, this island, this new island they just told me about? This has got to be where the boots are. Ice cavern, a thing that can help me? The, or, you know, the fire cavern was like, here. there's a sign, like, go to the ice place. There's something in there that'll help you. And I'm like, that's those boots. I know it. Mm-hmm. The whole so time. These are the the trencher boots, uh, and they let you leap over one square. Sometimes, sometimes it's it seems like it's a one and a quarter, <laughs> like you overshoot. Sometimes you like fall one. off. <laughs> and then these boots use stamina for no reason. Mm. Yeah, there really is not a reason for them to be eating it, up your stamina. It, and so, one, you have to be standing completely still to jump. Because if you're moving at all, Basically. you will roll. Because they give you a roll. Um, yeah. When you get the boots, you're on a little like island sort of thing. And you have to hop across platforms to get back. You don't even have enough stamina to get from where you <laughs> get to the boots to like dry land <laughs> in consecutive jumps like you have to jump halfway there and wait and then jump the rest of the way which one why two why i oh. mean here's the thing i was just playing bloodborne earlier today and when you talk about games that want you to leap off of things but don't give you a good way to leap off of things this isn't that bad <laughs> <laughs> like if i'm being honest fair fair uh, Tiffy was watching at this point when I got the boots, and I was like, "Oh, I have to like, I have to like put the boots on." And she's like, "Well, yeah, like, how do you think you were gonna get the the benefit from them?" I'm like, "No, no, no, I like, I have to, I have to wear them. Like, if I want to use my bombs, I have to be like, oh, I need my bombs now. Better take my shoes off because they're an item that you have to equip. They're an equipable item. It's not just something that's, hey, you have boots now." 
That is so. a that is like a Game Boy level action adventure trope. Yeah. Right? Like you get an item and it doesn't it doesn't change your character. It's just you can use that item to do a thing that oh, a God. person would be able to do. Or like Crystallis when they give you a um basically a fairy in a bottle item, but you have to have it like on. You have to like flip the switch on on it. And yeah, you may or may not have known it. that you have done that. And like, why mm-hmm. did I survive? I don't even know why I survived. Mm-hmm. Something must have been wrong with this game because there's things wrong with this game. So we come across uh, a, a couple puzzles that we need to like jump on some things. There's one that's annoying because you have to basically, you'll see a treasure chest in the middle of a room and you'll see these blocks going to it, but they intentionally make the last one too far for you to actually do it. So you have to circle around and I've, I over jumped so many of those ones. I did it like oh my three God. or four times. I kept jumping too far, falling down, having to climb all the way back up again. And then waiting for the ice fire to go away. Yes, and then you have to sit there and wait. And then all um, of a sudden, here comes here comes Buddy from behind us, our old floaty ice friend, uh, spirited away guy. Yeah. Comes in, and I'm just like, no, I don't have time for you right now. Like, please, please go away. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's... To have enemies that you can only kill with magic, and then you need the magic to traverse the dungeon, and then you can only use the magic twice before you have to refill it, is something. (laughs) One of these things is not good game design. But if you level up, you get a perk that makes it where you use less magic. Oh, come off it. Hey, there (laughs) you go. It doesn't do much. Problem solution. No, it's not. I got that perk too, and it didn't do me any good. It de- it said like twenty like, percent. It's like, hey, your boat goes faster, and I'm sitting on my boat like, I don't know. I might need another outboard motor because this is not working for me. <laughs> yeah, it's faster, those... but now the ocean is thicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, friction, more friction, right? Uh, there's also a room where we have a switch. That raises and lowers these like the the square pillar things, and I'll be honest, I found a second switch in that room, and I'm like, I don't even know what this switch is for. There's nothing else for me to do in this room. I hit the switch. I'm I'm guessing that I did something they didn't want to. They planned out the puzzle in a different way, and I just said, No, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna toss a bomb over here, and when that when that blows up and triggers it, I'll already be on top of this thing. Yeah. So. It's hard for me to look at some of these puzzles because it's not as clear of like, well, this is what you wanted me to do. It's really just like, I did something and I'm at the exit of this room and I'm going to go. It's not, so it's hard for me to really think yeah. back on these designs. Well, and, and so the, like, for instance, you know, we can go left or right in the beginning. If you go left in the beginning, it just takes you to the room after the trencher's boots or it's gonna drop you out yeah yeah Mm, so once you figure that out all you figure out is hey the boots are over there now go back and do something else you've got another key (laughs) you should go over there thanks for coming so that must be what happened then like i must have they probably designed that room for the people that would go the other way Mm -hmm. and because i didn't go that way at all I just did the the quickest path through it. Well, and back in the I think in the la- one of the one of the previous areas we had the the tunnel out of the the little jail cell that led to like these little secret uh overlooks to a bunch of the rooms I'd been in, but they you know there was nothing really cool to find up there. It was just like, "Oh, you can throw pots down from up here at bad guys if you want." Mm. That's about it. Sure. So, at some point, we get a big key. We go and open the door. We're going to fight the boss. It's a master key. Master key. Excuse me. It's the MK. (laughs) It's the MK Ultra. Um, We get the MK2. And... uh, (laughs) I prefer MK3 Ultimate. (laughs) Right. Uh, And we uh, come into this this dark throne room. And there is this, you know, the, the giant king... Of the fish people is frozen. No, not that one. And we have to then thaw the uh, 
the little one sitting in front of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we do he, that, the, the daughter, his daughter, no, not that one. Yeah, yeah, the the fish king's daughter, no, not that one. And uh, when that happens, suddenly the 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 king that was dead comes to life and slaps the daughter out of the way. Only they they both turn around, and because this is you know it's not the game's fault necessarily that it's seven years old and looks like it was made for a phone. Um, they both kind of turn around at you, and Tiffy's like eyeball ears, and I'm like, yep, yep, definitely eyeball ears. Uh, uh, but the way that they stare at you, I'm like, wait, I thought I was here to save the princess lady. She looks just as nonplussed to see me as the king does. Mm-hmm. So are they mm-hmm. both mad? And then he slaps her out of the way. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Also, you no, can go think... up and like, try and talk to her. And all it really does is rotate her m- model. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have to fight the zombified king. And uh, I like this fight. I thought it was interesting. It was a different kind of setup than I've seen in other Zelda games. It, this was, I, sure. I will give it to him. It's like, it felt original. You know, they came up with their own little layout of how to, how to take care of this. Except for when the giant eyeball comes out of his back. Um, I yeah, didn't that... have, I didn't see that. I don't think well, I saw I mean, that. The, the same thing with the last uh, boss in the last dungeon. Where, oh, oh, right. Wah, yeah, yeah. Just the Majora's Mask 3D remake sort of syndrome of, here's your spot. Here you go. Right. Uh, yeah, it does this thing. I don't know how much we talked about it, but like to take on these enemies, there is a, a a giant celestial star, like this burning ball of fire that comes out of them. That, that you have soul. To hit. Our girlfriend's dad um, is controlling everything. <laughs> uh, but what happens is the the dead fish king will chase you down, and he has two moves. He'll shoot a laser, or he will. Shake things from the ceiling to make stuff fall on you, basically. Oh, well, he's got a third move, which is bump into you to also freeze you. <laughs> yep. Oh, does that happen? Okay. Yeah, yeah. A lot. So when you're using... I was using a lot of pots to throw at him, because eventually you hit him enough, he'll go, oh, got to take a knee. And But then all of the items that the pots would have given me are now around his feet, and so trying to get... To like, I need another bomb. I need more bombs. I need more bombs right now. I need hearts right now. I need magic right, right now. I'm like, ah, uh, I touched his toesies. I'm frozen now. So, so Brian, describe how this fight plays out, though. Like, what they want, the, what they want us to do. Okay, so there's um, a switch in the middle, and there's like four switches uh, on the outside, but they're like up one level, but you can't get to them because. We don't have the courage to jump vertically. So if you press the switch in the middle, it, it it's a timer. So it, yeah, what's up, BC? Uh, there, there is, I will say there is one that you can get to um, by climbing up the stairs and jumping down. Uh, so you don't have to hit the center switch. There's, there's, also is, a, okay. there's also a block that you can move around to act as a bridge, which is yeah. what I ended up doing. But... It seems like they wanted you to step on the switch in the middle, which is timed, and then wait for the timer to end, in which case the the switches that are are surrounding it, there's blocks next to those that the the lower and raise, and they will lower down so you can stand on it, wait for the elevator, go up, and step on a switch that will shoot a fire thing out, much like the bad guys we were complaining about earlier. Mm-hmm. Only this one does not last nearly as long as any of the other ones do. Uh, I see. This was this was a super quick battle for me. Like it was, it was just one. You know, two steps repeat. I hit the button, ran up there, went up, did that. The timing was just perfect every time. Where he was right there on it in front of the the statue every time I did it. So this this battle took me a minute basically. Of just going back and forth. The mo- the only annoying part I had was at the end where the button freezes and I was out of magic. So I had to run around and toss some pots and get some magic back. But other than that, it was just back and forth super quick. Mm. What if I told you all the buttons can freeze all at any time he chooses? Yeah. No, that, if you're yeah, that happened to me it, only at the end. And if you're nearby it, um, 
because you're trying to get on that button to hurt him, he'll he'll definitely target you, and it's more likely that it'll freeze. Uh, mm. I ended up getting him down. I think I fought him three times. All of them were very long fights, but I I got him down to twenty percent health really fast all three times, and then the last twenty percent was just like this madness. I always of, have to ask: Were you using your own hands, Brian? Uh. Yes, yes, I was. Okay. <laughs> I did not have tiny hands for anytime this. You, anytime you're like, man, I, this one was tough for me. I kept dying. And I was just like, did you die because you were told to die or because yeah. you were using toy <laughs> no. hands to do this? No, this okay. this one was all uh, all me on this. So, yeah, and like, I'd get, I'd get him down real quick. I'd use my bombs on him, go through my bombs plus the extra bombs the guy sold me. So, like, 20 bombs on this dude's face. And then the rest of it is spent frantically trying to get everything to line up and hopefully get pots to drop health from time to time. As far as I know, when we are fighting these bosses, uh, you don't want to. So I don't think in the actual bosses, bombs are useful. Like Only when, we when are, his when we were hitting the eyeball came things. out. But again, I was fine with the sword. I, I, it only took me. I only had to do four phases. Mm -hmm. So I took 25% health off every time I stunned him and made that come off. Okay. So yeah. I believe bombs would be the exact same amount. I believe it's a threshold that when you hit that much, he's going to come back to life automatically anyway. Right. So just, just to keep in mind that, you know, so you don't waste bombs in the future on that. Yeah. No. It, yeah. Go ahead, BC. I, I, yeah. I was just going to say, I, I tried using bombs and I found the sword to be just as effective. Mm -hmm. Um, and, if you're smart, which I wasn't the first few times I fought him, um, <laughs> you can just knock him down, hit him for a bit, and then go restart the uh, platforms so that mm -hmm. as soon as he gets up, you're hitting him with another burst of fire. So uh, it's just like he's constantly stunned. Yeah, one okay, of the times that's, that's a good strategy. Yeah, one of the times I burned him, uh, and it would have been the final. I think it was my first battle. It would have been the final time to slash and kill uh he dropped on top of the platform and uh, i was just like you're up there and i'm down here man can't hit you with my sword i'm all out of bombs <laughs> there's no jars anywhere nearby this is great this is just this is what dreams are made of <laughs> there's there's also a random block at the top if you go all the way up the stairs yeah on one side there's a random block that you can push to make a bridge between two spots. And so I thought there was going to be a second phase that was going to use that. But it's just there. It doesn't well, do it, anything. It, it, if you push it into place, you can then hop over to, yeah, another spot where there's one of those torches that they let us pick up. And I was like, cool. This will be at least I could use this at least once to send him into the I'm on fire uh, animation Section that would have been where cool. Where he's vulnerable. It doesn't work. It just it just breaks on his face, and he's like, whatever. That wasn't magic fire. Not, not real fire. <laughs> I'm still cold. So we do all that. We beat him. And then, like, the, uh, the butler, or whatever you want to call him, um, shows up like he was hiding around the corner. He was like, I've been here the whole time, princess. Everything's fine. Ignore the fact that your dad came to life and was an evil monster. Also, the you've only been be here dead. for five minutes. <laughs> Everything's fine. It was a weird sequence of events um, that as soon as you're done with that. Well, and then you also talk to the three triangles. No, not those. And then they basically say, I am the power of courage and majesty or something like but that not those. but not those um and um, go find the coral swords the one that killed sea lork <laughs> you must find ocean horn ocean horn got himself a good name his counterparts i know of at least one of their names and it's sea lork and i'm like right. oh, really really lost out on the raffle there yeah so it looks like uh, our next mission is going to be to find the sword that dispels evil. No, not that one. Yeah. And for the next episode, though. Forged gonna... in the depths of the sea out of <laughs> coral. And salt. Many Boston salt. spies died to get this sword. They say that, too. A lot of people like, 
risked their life to dive as far as they possibly could to get the special coral, which I don't think that's how coral <laughs> works. Coral's uh, definitely close to the surface, but that's fine. Yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll let it slide. With everything else in this game, we'll let it slide. For the next episode, we're going to do another dungeon. We're going to get that next dungeon. You're going to get that next shape. Any bets on what the shape is going to be? Not that one. Okay. <laughs> so we got circles, Whatever right? And then triangles. So maybe it's squares. Uh, Parallelograms. Uh, parallel. Ooh, hey, there you go. I'm going to go for a, a, a nice rhombus. Okay. Fantastic. Um, I, I also, whatever shape it ends up being, they will, as they have done twice so far, warp us out of here to our ship and go, bye, get out of our, <laughs> bye, leave our island now, please, bye. <laughs> maybe just, maybe humans aren't that bad, but still no humans alive like, except you, honey, bo- honey boy. <laughs> really nice. It happened with the owl people, too. They just, like, all of a sudden we're in front of our ship, and they're all standing there blocking the entrance back <laughs> off the pier. They're like... Go. <laughs> They're already doing that animation and all waving you by, but you're just standing right in front of them and yeah. not saying anything. They're like, but they're waving uh, at you as, as if we're over the horizon. I missed a, uh, I missed a uh, a firestone, and now that I have the jumping boots, I want to go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Thanks. Like I said, go to the next dungeon, get the shape, get some items, and then we'll meet back here and talk about it on Chat of the Wild. Guy Den.